Ladies and gentlemen, here we are. Week 18, the final week. Your championship games are upon you if you're still playing. And we are here breaking out half of the matchups, looking at our starts of the week and the epic conclusion to find out who is the one true boom boom kicker. Like the video, subscribe, and enjoy the show. Today's show is sponsored by Head & Shoulder Scalp Shield Technology. Regular use of Head & Shoulder Scalp Shield provides a continuous invisible shield of protection against dandruff, itch, and dryness, renewing your protection with every wash. Get up to 100% dandruff protection that's never not working with Head & Shoulder Scalp Shield Technology, available at walmart.com. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your host... Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the podcast. Oh, welcome. That's the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Get it right. Don't be nasty. I'm your host, Mike the Fantasy Hitman Wright. Andy, the Andrew Holloway, will be back tomorrow for those matchups but today he is not here so i'm joined by my best friend mm. jason moore happy to be here happy to go through these matchups with you michael this is how we're are we doing npr yeah uh, yes the rest of this uh episode will be presented in a very straightforward newsworthy manner if you want to follow the show on Thank socials you. please do at instagram.com slash fantasy footballers well, now now you're just now you're just boring me no, this is, I'm. Oh, we, I feel like we're getting real close to ASMR. <laughs> we're just we're, we're we're starting newsworthy. We're starting serious, but we're gonna end a little uh, little whispery. Follow us on socials. We're on IG. We're on Twitter. Twitter is at the FF Ballers at Jason FFL at FF Hitman at Andy Holloway. On today's show, we are never not working yet again. Be, well, not yet again. Right, because we never stop. Yeah, if you're never not working, we are still... We are still never not we're working. We're still never not working. News and notes, we got the first part of the matchups, the starts of the week, and... Oh, man. The ladies and gentlemen. Is it the conclusion, or is it... I don't know. you got to tell me. The thrilling end of this chapter <laughs> of the boom, boom kicker of the week. Where were we last week, Jay? Do you remember? Uh man, I believe I just Hadouken'd I mean, a couple author? of kickers. Oh, okay. Uh, and, uh, phew, man, I put them down, uh, you know, very handily. You, put, you The kickers or the Hadouken? The, the, the kickers. Also, we have incredible oh, hold news. On, hold oh, on, hold oh. on. Breaking news. I've just received word just now. The Boom Boom Kicker of the Week has been picked up. <gasps> For 2022. Yes, that is so such it, it will be back news. <laughs> so happy to hear that. Um, also, that news was brought to you by me. Thank you. You <laughs> you broke it. I developed the news and I broke it. Uh, I think that's what Shefty's doing. That's like who's how have people not thought about this? Just be the one who creates the news and then you break the news. I don't think you're. I don't think you're thinking of this for the first time. I think this is being done. Oh, is it? Oh, yeah. The this, Illuminati? <laughs> yeah, this is, uh, this is out there. Um, uh, speaking of breaking news, this yes. is incredible. Earlier this week, earlier this week, we congratulated Joseph Mason, the winner of the 2021 Listener League, who gets to play with us next year. And then Derek Logan said no, and he dunked on you. Boom, Boom shakalaka. shakalaka. He found the scoring issue of the Chicago Bears. He had only lost by 0 0.22 points, and he ran it up the flagpole. It was seen. I don't know if this has anything to do with his work on the matter or not, but he found it right away. He did. And uh, Joseph, he said he was scared. Joseph knew it was too close. And the scoring change actually happened, and we have a new champion. My apologies, Joseph Mason. You will not be in the Listener League next year, but Derek Logan, you will you, be. You just apologized to a big loser. Oh, man. I apologize for nothing. <laughs> so that was that was incredible because every time you, you win or lose by yep. less than two points, but 
especially less than one point, you have to wait for stat corrections. They do come, and every now and then they have an effect on the game. But the fact that they had an effect on the championship week it was unbelievable. of the listener league is is incredible. So what a what a crazy uh, happening, and um, we'll see you next year. Yes, Derek. congratulations. Never not working. Presented by Head & Shoulders, Scalp Shield Technology. Available at Walmart. All right, so earlier this season, we took a deep dive look at targets per route run, and it has turned out to be very valuable. Um, a very telling stat. Targets per route run is basically not necessarily how many targets you're getting a game, but when you're on the field, when you've got the snap and you're running a route, how often does the quarterback actually throw you the ball? Because that's an earned you know, the target is an earned stat. That means you got open. That means the quarterback trusts you. That means that the team called your number, whatever it is. And so you can see that when this player is on the field and he's getting the ball more, um, that means good things for their future. That's the way that right. it has worked out for targets per out run. So we were curious about how this might work for running backs. Because, you, can, you, you know, we look at the snap percentage. We have a weekly article that comes out about snap percentage breakdown. And who's on the field more, who's on the field less, who's getting the first down, the third down work, who's, you know, uh, breaking down running backs. But what about how much running backs touch the ball per the times they're on the field? How many opportunities per snap or as we're workshopping it around here, upper snap. So the upper snap. The upper snap. How do you we, feel you, about that, Footclay? We are. We're looking. <laughs> we're, we're taking a new look, a fresh look at a, a way to look at the, the data, the statistics, and you could have coined any phrase you wanted, mm -hmm. and you've gone with opera snap. Yeah, I did it. I mean, I, I freaking home run to that thing. <laughs> the opera snap sounds like a you just discovered a new prehistoric fossil, mm. and you've named the animal the opera snap. Well, let's see how the opera snap is applying to running backs and see if there is anything. Because here's here's the reality is um, a quarterback is deciding the routes, you know, the targets per route run. But it's kind of the head coach that's deciding um, the opportunities per snap. When this guy's on the field, I've got to get him the ball. And I think that that could be very good for future utilization. Sure. Uh, so we wanted to look at guys who are both high on the opportunities per snap and low on the extremes. And then we're going to keep a look at this stat as time goes on, see if it is telling, if that's just something we should be looking at behind the scenes more and more. Here are the players that stand out as the hot diggity dogs, the high-end opera snappers. First and foremost oh, is, is – This is good stuff. Yeah, it's great stuff. Uh, first and foremost is Deonta Foreman. He leads the NFL in opera snap. 62% of his snaps, when he's on the field, he is touching the ball. And we have seen him dominate last week. 132 rushing yards against Miami. He was PFF's highest graded runner. Uh, you know, he's like 80% of Derrick Henry, which is pretty darn good. Um, ironically, Derrick Henry was also very high in opera snap uh, before. It's in fact 100%. That's not true, but that feels like it. When it, Derrick it, Henry, 100% of his snaps, he should get the he ball. He should get the ball, but then his foot would break. Oh, no. Too soon. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, another player, and we've seen this man, Elijah Mitchell. They love him, and this is another way that I'm looking at this. Is like, who does the team really love going into next season? W there's a big question: Are they going to rely on Elijah Mitchell? Are they going to go out and get a higher end running back, a free agent, a high draft pick? He has a 51 percent, which is the highest opera snap for a 49ers running back. Over the last decade. <laughs> I love just casually using yeah, upper snap. Yeah, it's good. Um, so he is a rookie, and he is already getting the highest opportunity per snap of any San Francisco 49ers running back in a decade. I believe he's the dude going forward. Um, they clearly trust him and love him uh, when he's on the field. And then uh, the other one to look at is a guy I brought up as a dynasty buy yesterday. Ramondre Stevenson at 57%, along with Damian Harris. Both of these guys, when they're on the field, they are getting the ball. Um, you know, And combined, they have 12 touchdowns inside the five. So as a team, that would be tied with Jonathan Taylor 
Um, and man, if Damian Harris goes away, Ramondre will yeah. be here to stay. Yeah. Uh, but on the other side, like who is maybe on the way out? Maybe getting trusted less. Maybe um, the coach is saying, I think we're stronger going elsewhere. Ezekiel Elliott uh -oh. is near the bottom. He has seen an opportunity on just 36.5% of his snaps, which is 51st among qualifying running backs. He's run the second most running back routes at the position, but he's targeted on only 15% of routes. I mean, Zeke has always been a workload guy. Sure. He's always been a volume guy. I mean, he had breakaway speed as like rookie and sophomore year, but he's been more like, I want a guy who's going to touch the ball 300, 350 times. And they're not giving him the ball even when he's out there as much. So going forward, I don't think that's going to change for the better. I think that's going to only get worse and worse. And then the other guy is Miles Sanders, which this one is fascinating. This one me. was infuriating. Oh, yeah. At the beginning of the year. Because you look at, well, he's on the field a lot. So it's, it's going to come. But it never came. 40% on the season. And what is insane about this is that you want to know who's pretty high in opera snap? Jordan Howard, Boston, like when those guys were on the field, they were getting the ball. But with Miles Sanders, he wasn't. So I don't know if this is just simply when Miles Sanders was here, they were passing the ball more, and he's just in pass protection. Um, or I, I think that's what it was. the The shift that the Philadelphia Eagles had it happened in that mark of the season where Miles Sanders got hurt, and then I feel like he came back to. A high opera snap. I don't have the numbers in front of me, but I, I would assume so because you had, you know, 46% of the snaps, yet 17 opportunities. 58% of the snaps, yet 27 opportunities against the New York Jets. So I think that that number uh, moved around. But I, it's, it's interesting to see the data from this point of view for, for Zeke and what it. What do you believe is the future of the Dallas Cowboys, the future of Ezekiel Elliott, who's still on a massive contract? Uh, was it because he got banged up this year? Because they didn't take him. I mean, no, he was still on the field. Yeah, ton. I was going to say, it's not because of that. This is a stat that says it's not because he's banged up. He, otherwise, he would be on the field less. He's on the field. They're just saying he's not our strongest option. On the field. I think that's what it's saying. And, and the truth is, the eyeballs back that up, right? He's not the strongest option. He's not looking. Like, would you rather give the ball off to Zeke or would you rather give the ball right. off to Tony Pollard right now? If you're a Cowboys fan and it's second and eight, I feel like, I'd, I feel like I'm more confident in Tony Pollard. And, and this is showing that the Cowboys might be less confident in Zeke as well. Get up to 100% dandruff protection. That's never not working like Jason who's coming up with hot ticket items like Opper Snap. Opper Snap. Get that 100% dander protection with head and shoulder scalp shield technology available at walmart.com. News and notes from around the league. All right. Joe Burrow says he does not expect to play in Sunday's regular season finale against the Browns. Yeah, here it is. The this Bengals is... are accepting their their standings, and they're going to be resting some people. We, At least Joe Burrow. Yeah, I mean, we meant, we mentioned this yesterday. Once the news came out about Joe Mixon uh, missing this game on the COVID list, if you're down Joe Mixon and Burrow is dealing with a knee issue, it would be in the best interest of the team to shut it down. And if you're shutting down Joe Burrow and you don't have Joe Mixon, do you really want to give an opportunity for – Jamar Chase or T Higgins to no. get injured? No, I do not. So I mean, I I assume they'll be active. They'll be active players, um, and they very well might get the first snap. But I have a real hard time playing Jamar Chase in this championship week, and that is the most brutal decision of the week so far. I really hope they come out and say that they're just going to bench him because it would give you the freedom as a fantasy manager to go right okay, I'm going to put in this other middle-tier option over Joe Burrow because if it's a middle-tier option, benching Jamar yes, Chase yes. has not worked ever. So, <laughs> right. man, uh, hopefully more news to come out, but be yeah. afraid of the – and even if he's not benched, he obviously has a backup quarterback. 
Yes. Uh, so stay tuned in for that one. Kirk Cousins was activated from the COVID list. He will start. Also starting will be Justin Fields for the season finale for the Chicago Bears. This is great news for uh, K.J. Osborne and Darnell Mooney. I, I the feel like Justin Fields part? Justin Fields for Darnell Mooney and okay. the Kirk Cousins part for K.J. Osborne. Oh, I see. I see where you're going. Uh, could this be the Budget Magician's final trick? That is TBD. What do you put the odds? Like right now. Of, Na of, of Matt Nagy, Nagy being back. Uh, sub 50%. I'll put it at, uh, let's go 35%. Yeah, I mean, I... You know, a couple of weeks ago, it was it was like two percent, right? And now it feels like it's yeah, thirty five, forty percent. There's a chance he he's back, but uh, we'll find out. I but it, I st I still put it on the doubtful side of things. Uh, but Justin Fields, if you are Justin Fields, if look should be put on your uh, bench. Like if you didn't get Taysom Hill or um, uh, Trey Lance as options to start, and always have a backup quarterback option this this week because of COVID, Justin Fields projects as a higher level streamer because the Minnesota Vikings defense stinks. Yeah, the matchup is great. And remember that the last two times we saw Justin Fields, yeah. one of which was against the Minnesota Vikings, both games he was the quarterback 10. So he's been relevant for fantasy, and I agree with you. He should be on your bench. Steelers have placed Deontay Johnson on the reserve COVID-19 list. That's going to be real tough with the timing. Yeah, I mean, we're already at Thursday now, so when it, when I see people popping up this late, I'm going to assume that they will be out. Yeah, so that's that's brutal for this week. That's brutal for the Steelers who need to win. Chase Edmonds was a non-participant at Wednesday's practice. James Conner was limited. They've both been uh, – both of the Arizona Cardinals running backs have been banged up. Just monitor the uh, the news there. Do you – do you bench? Do you do you stash Eno Benjamin? Like, are would you? I don't think I do. No, no. Uh, One of these guys will probably. I be believe. Active. I believe so. Braxton Berrios featured on this week's Smoker or Smoker Fire. He was a. Uh, he's dealing with a quad contusion. Yeah, and it, did not practice. It's Wednesday, but you got to pay attention to it. Yeah, for sure. Uh, we a lot of people, I'm sure, picked him up with the idea that he would be started if he is even limited on Thursday, I am less likely to play him. Buccaneers running back Keyshawn Vaughn, <gasps> Jason. Yes! Practicing in full. I had not seen this. That is great news. He has a true opportunity. I have not seen the results of the MRI for Ronald Jones, but what I know is that most if of If you see them, do you know how to diagnose those results? I have not read the analysis of <laughs> results of his MRI. <laughs> But what I do know is that almost always when a guy gets an MRI, they miss a week. Like, even if it comes back, they're like, you're, you're good. It's like, they they went and got an MRI, not because they were like, well, maybe. It's a preventative. Like, they're, they're dealing with an issue. And Keyshawn Vaughn, who should have been the next man up and had the opportunity last week, hurt his ribs. So this is, oh, man. This is interesting not only for this week, but if this is a, a huge opportunity for Keyshawn Vaughn to establish his position for the running back core for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, Leonard Fournette, Ronald Jones are both free agents. Mm -hmm. Now, I would st I would project personally that Leonard Fournette will come back to the team. I can't imagine he tests free agency and someone throws a huge bag of money at him. So he'll get a fair offer, I think, from the Buccaneers, and he'll come back and be the starter. But it could be Leonard Fournette and Keyshawn Vaughn. Or in a wild, wacky world of dynasty football – Maybe they both leave, and maybe that third-round draft capital that Bruce Arians and company spent on Sh on Keyshawn Vaughn turns out. like It, it wouldn't be the craziest thing in the world for a third-round player to wait a uh, couple years, to, wait, to, to have, uh, wait on the bench, and then become part of the team in their third year. So but you know what would be even better? Because this is a tough matchup this week. Keyshawn yeah, Vaughn's against the Carolina Panthers. Yes. Um, so if he comes out and stinks and they don't have the money for Rojo or Leonard Fournette, come on, Brees Hall, baby. Oh, gosh. Oh, yeah. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, we've started the dip in the toes into the rookie pool. Mm. And Jason has the 101. He he was able to snag uh, I it. I traded for it. Yes, thank, that's yes, where I was going to go. Thank you. I was going to say that you uh, – 
you stole the 101, or what turned into the 101 in a trade. This I'll, was two years ago. I traded yes. for a first. Uh, thank you, Todd Gurley. Um, and it turned into the 101, which so far but, I'm liking my Brees' pieces over so, here. <laughs> so he has the 101, so he has already been speculating on the top running back option for this year's rookies, and he is already madly in love with the running back from Iowa State, Brees Hall. TBD. We'll see what Jason does moving forward. Antonio Gibson for Washington. He was activated from the COVID list, a limited participant. Let's see if he plays. And then the update of COVID. Tevin Coleman, David Johnson, Jarrett Cook were all activated. And here is a bit of interesting news. We have some reports coming out that Calvin Ridley and the Falcons appear to be on the path to separation. We again, we don't this is all early uh, this is all early rumor mill stuff because we haven't heard anything from Calvin Ridley, but this is and, and honestly, we don't know 100% why he needed to remove himself from the team. But this is an opportunity here for for Calvin Ridley if like you're looking at dynasty, do you take the shot of trying to trade for him right now before the rumor mill he really starts to heat up because once that furnace is going for a player of the caliber of Calvin Ridley then i it would it will be far more difficult to actually trade for them yeah i mean it's just it's always a matter of price um i'm not giving up a first rounder for Calvin Ridley even though he's okay. obviously you're, established you're still he's, that concerned well, he, yeah he is worth a first rounder if you know oh, he's playing football he's worth it more than more yeah, I mean, he's one. worth a, a, a high-end first. He's only 27 years old. He's shown that he can dominate. Um, but, you know, if, if I'm a decent team and I can throw out a second-round option for him, I would I would kick the tires. I doubt you're going to get him, but maybe. Yeah, you're not going to get him for a two. So you're saying you wouldn't trade the first for him? I would not currently trade the first because I think that there is um, a non-zero chance that he never plays football again. Sure. And I like my players to, to play, play football. Yeah, yeah, it helps your it helps your fancy team. It does. And when my team is helped and they are great and I am a champion, I will commemorate my awesome season at thank Fantasy. You, Jarrett Patterson. <laughs> yes. Uh, thank you, Keyshawn Vaughn and Sony Michelle and Rashad Penny, the four running backs we <laughs> rode. That's our four horsemen. <laughs> yes, our four horsemen <laughs> who were in our starting lineup for the championship game, and we won. Thank you to those guys uh, to commemorate what you did on the field. We will be going, and we have already gone, to FantasyChamps.com. FantasyChamps.com has all the trophies that you need, the championship belts, the swag, the championship rings, the display cases, everything you need to commemorate your awesome season. Congratulations, you did it. Make sure you get it at FantasyChamps.com. I'm going to throw out two codes here because you can use the code BALLERS sure, and you get 10% off your order. But right now they also have a deal where if you get any trophy or any championship belt, you can add one of their $59 rings to your cart and use the promo code free ring and you will get that $60 NFL stunner or the bling ring for absolutely free. And those are genuinely my favorite thing on their site. The rings are, are awesome. Now, We've you, got, can't, you can't use both codes. That's not That's how. true. You cannot use both. You got to either or this situation. <laughs> yes. Uh, but yeah, do that. Go to fantasychamps.com, the only place to get your uh, commemorative sports memorabilia championship gear. Fantasy forecast. All right, let's kick this off. There, there are some games on Saturday, ladies and gentlemen. So pay attention to that. The Kansas City Chiefs at eleven and five will be taking on the Denver Broncos seven and nine. They will be trying to play a little bit of a spoiler. The DK Sportsbook line has Kansas City favored by 10.5 points. The over-under sitting at 45. That gives KC a healthy implied team total of nearly 28 points. Are there any real big question marks from this matchup? Um, not really. This is a straightforward uh, situation. I, I would assume that uh, Jerry Judy and Tim Patrick would be back off the COVID list since they missed last week. They are not yet. I would not go dip my toes in the Noah Fant River that was so successful last week. He dominated last he week. He did. In five career games against Kansas City, he averages three for 38. It should still be Drew Lockett quarterback, so I'm not going 
But that uh, that was going to be a point I brought up. How many games have we seen Drew Locke now this season? Because it's been at least three, if if my memory serves. Kyle, can you vet that for me? But in the past three weeks, Noah Fant has been a top 12 tight end. Tight end. <laughs> tight end. Top 12 tight end. Top 12 tight end. Two of those three games, including the overall number one this past week. And when we st- – I mean, Noah Fant got off to a pretty hot start last year with Drew Locke. I'm just saying there might be something there of the Drew Locke connection. And Feel a f- quick update, guys. Uh, those two receivers did get activated yesterday. Okay. okay. There you so go. they're back. So you but still no uh, – No, especially with Jerry Judy and Tim Patrick back. And also the Chiefs have been – very good against tight end. Uh, you know, the past six weeks, they're top five against the position. So I'm not playing Noah Fant with Jerry Judy back. I'm not playing Cortland Sutton. I'm not playing Tim Patrick. So on the Broncos side of the ball, it's, you know, Javante Williams and Melvin Gordon. They've been very disappointing the last two weeks. Yeah. I am still willing to roll with them based on their own talent um, and the fact that they're not, you know, they're not going to be bad every week. Uh, it's difficult to imagine that if you've been riding those guys, though, two weeks in a row that you won and you're still in your championship because it was bad yeah, timing for them. That's so fair. I would imagine that it's the other side of the ball where Tyreek Hill managers might not be in the championship either because he's had three of four bad weeks during the worst time of the year to have bad performances. But you're starting Kelsey, you're starting Hill. Um, I think the real question is just how high are you on Daryl Williams if he's the guy? He's been great. Are you starting him over Dalvin Cook? Oh man, the, the de- <laughs> why go right to the the kill shot? Yeah, right. The knockout punch. Dalvin Cook is very difficult to gauge at this point. I would say the news that they're starting Kirk Cousins gives me more optimism that they'll just play a regular game because they could easily shut down Kirk. Uh, so I, I think that Dalvin Cook will play and play his regular snaps. So I would play him over Daryl Williams. But but Williams, without Clyde, he's right back in the running back one. The low-end running back one uh, discussion for me, look at last week, it's, just, it, it's touchdowns. The Kansas City Chiefs are going to score a lot. Daryl may not score all of them, but he would. Just, you want scoring opportunities. Yeah, when you're implied for 27-plus points and you're a 10-point favorite, you you usually need to start those running backs. So that's the, I think that's it for Kansas City Broncos. Yep. Dallas Cowboys eleven and five taking on the Philadelphia Eagles at nine and seven. DK their sports book has this line at the Cowboys favor by six and a half over under sitting at forty three points. Philadelphia has nothing to play for. I believe Dallas has nothing to play for. Am I remembering that correct? They they can, they can improve their seed. Oh okay. So they can if if some things go right. Got yeah, it. so the, there are ways in which I, I think that uh, Dallas will be playing for something and Philly will be playing for nothing. Um, it's always one of those questions of like, if you're playing for nothing, how long do you play Jalen Hurts? Right. Can you rely – and it's – as fantasy managers, you're going to be frustrated. This is why we tell people not to play Week 18 championships or the final week uh, of the year – because it's really not fair. There isn't a way that we can analytically tell you whether Jalen Hurts will be pulled after the first quarter or not. Mm-hmm. If he's not, man, he could be a great option. He could be the number one quarterback on the week. And if he is pulled, he could be the he could score four points and then um, you lost your championship. So I, personally, in those situations where we're just not sure, I'm going to always try to pivot to another option. What about – and it's pretty easy to pivot on Philadelphia side, but what about Dallas Goddard? Uh, Man, I think Dallas Goddard is – I mean, he's obviously in a similar boat, um, and the the reality is – Which Dallas Goddard, reminder, was put on the COVID list uh, two days ago, but do the with the new timing – he should be back or eligible to play, I should say. Yeah, I mean, at tight end, it's tough because it's just are, are there guys you're willing to pick up off the waiver wire and go? If you could pivot to a Zach Ertz, absolutely, I would do that. But what about a streaming option? It would be like someone like Cole Komet I would, or Conklin. I would go Tyler Higby. Okay. 
Tyler well, Higby. But Higby is a streaming option. That's what so, I'm saying. He's probably okay. out there available, and I would go Tyler Higby over uh, those those options. And what will be interesting for this game is generally the Philadelphia Eagles have been a very tough matchup for opposing fantasy players over the last six weeks. Fourth against quarterbacks, ninth against running backs, second against wide receivers. But same questions. Do they do anything with the starters, uh, playing them full games, giving guys extra rest? And because of that, like Dak, you're playing Dak as a top 12 option. Uh, I can't imagine moving away from those guys. Are you moving away from any of the Cowboys, or is this just no, full go for th everybody? There's a full go for everybody on the Cowboys' side. Even if the Eagles, if we knew they are playing their whole team, it's a divisional matchup. They're going to play their hearts out. They're going to try to be the spoiler of uh, Dallas improving. They're going to get in their reps, and they play the best game they can. You're still not benching Dak. You're not benching Zeke. You're not benching Amari Cooper, C.D. Lamb, or Dalton Schultz. So those guys are just in. Okay, and then so uh, Tony Pollard. I was trying to pull up some. So, would you play Tony Pollard, or would you play the volume play of Dari Agumbawale against the Indianapolis Colts? I would go the volume of Dari. Would you play Melvin Gordon against Kansas City or Tony Pollard? Gordon. Okay, well, that seems to make it pretty easy. On to Sunday. All right, and if you have those players, make sure you take them out of your flex and put them into your positional spots, especially oh, with COVID. the craziness of this season. Sunday games. The Cincinnati Bengals are ten and six. They will be taking on the Cleveland Browns, who are seven and nine, removed from the playoffs. And you've got some bad, bad stuff percolating in Cleveland, dealing with Baker Mayfield. Like, I don't know how substantiated these rumors are, but whispers of Baker possibly demanding a trade. Out of just bad vibes right now seeping out of Cleveland, but Baker will not play. Who would trade for Baker Mayfield? Uh, I think a lot of teams would. Really? Yeah, I do. I think a lot of teams would. I mean, price is everything. We've said that, but going into like a rental of Baker to see if he could be the guy. We've Baker has flashed plenty of times, like way more than uh, like Sam Darnold did. Sure, Baker has put up way, way more better or put better film out than Darnold, and Darnold was traded for. Baker would be my perfect example. I I talked about this a couple weeks ago. This is going to be on the things to remember episode um, coming up whenever that is in the off season because I don't want to forget it. But he would be the perfect example of let's say that Denver or Carolina went and traded for Baker. And there's going to be a lot of hype, a lot of... Oh, if Carolina does it again. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah, and, they, and they, they could. But a team like uh, that, there's going to be a lot of hype, a lot of positivity around what he could do for these great weapons, for your Jerry Judys and your DJ Moores and all those. He is not a quarterback that's going to take anyone to the next level. So I would be, I would view those wide receiving options as what they did this year, which was jack squat. Really? Yeah. I mean, the guy... In, in not a full season, didn't he break the rookie touchdown record at I, that time? I said this to you out in the studio a couple days ago. I was like, what happened to rookie Baker? Rookie Baker was great. Yeah. So, Mac Jones has no guarantee he's going to be great. He, Mac Jones looks great, but so did Baker. Just There's so much evidence of Baker not being good enough now. Perhaps there is just a disconnect between the, the Kevin Stefanski system and Baker Mayfield. Hopefully. I like Baker as a dude. He's a fun dude. Makes Yeah, makes good commercials. Just don't like watching them play quarterback. Uh, the DraftKings Sportsbook has the Browns favored by six points due to uh, no Joe Burrow, likely no Joe Mixon. The Bengals pretty much waving the, the white flag here. So what do we do for so, fantasy football? So here's the question. Everybody out there that has Jamar Chase is probably playing this week. He's been so good. Um, to get you to the championship. When asked if Chase will play week 18, Coach Zach Taylor said, potentially. Zach? No. no, no Zach. You, you, oh. <laughs> I fat fingered, but I stand by my decision. <laughs> great, great job. I really like the, You got the whole band going. You got the drums. You got the horns. I like it. Mr. Conductor over here. Uh, um, Zach, if I may. Mr. Taylor. I apologize. Coach Taylor. Please just let us know that you're not going to play him. Please don't play him for your sake and ours and let us know before the game. 
That's all I'm asking is for you to do exactly that and nothing else. Um, I don't think that's too much to ask for. But let's say, because this is, the, this is one of the most important decisions this week, if he is active, we have to say... I would play him. Chase, but Chase or. That's the question. Okay. How far down? So I'm going to give you some names. All right. And we're going to say, would you play... Hit me. Uh, would you play Jamar Chase or Odell Beckham? Oh, I don't like this game. I know. <laughs> I know. It sucks because if Jamar Chase plays a whole game, I mean, he doesn't even have to play a whole game. He could k take one catch yes, to the house. He could. Um, I guess I'd play Jamar Chase. Odell Beckham is in a very good spot, though, against San Francisco. I would go Odell. Hunter Renfro? Jamar Chase. I would go Renfro. Waddle? Uh, I'm a oh, Waddle against the Patriots. It, it, it will be Brandon Allen throwing the ball to Jamar Chase. So I mean, if, like if you're answering those names over Jamar Chase, then you're not playing Jamar. Yeah, I mean, I'm looking at my rankings that I've got right now. I've got Jamar Chase at my wide receiver 19, so he's not unplayable as of yet. But I'm, you know, he's not a top 10 guy for me. And there are, if I've got a decent option, uh, I'm going to play them over Jamar Chase. Samaj P. Ryan, likely the next man up here if Joe Mixon is to miss time. They've used him as a pass catching running back, so he he has a three down skill set. Let's see. I don't know if they'll use him that way. Uh I don't know if one of the other backups, potentially Chris Evans, gets involved. That will be interesting to watch. I think that if nothing else, Samaj P. Ryan will see a bunch of volume. Uh over on the Brown side, disappointing for Nick Chubb, but you're gonna play him. Dearness Johnson was added to the COVID list. Does that put Kareem Hunt in a playable spot here to close the season? Uh, we'll have to wait and see. Based on the fact that they're playing for nothing, I can't imagine that they're going to force Kareem Hunt to get on the field. In fact, when I think about this game, this has an over-under of 37.5 points. That is atrociously low. That is Vegas saying that neither one of these teams has anything to play for, which they don't. And neither one of these teams are going to play for anything. They're not going to play the divisional head-to-head -head because it's not like if you're Cleveland, you're going to get any pride in beating the sitting, resting Bengals. I think you do. I think you still take something away from it. I'm not saying they're not going to try to win the game. They're going to go out there and whoever's on the field is going to try to be better than the people on the other side. But my point is, as an organization, you're not putting your best foot forward. You're not putting your best players out there. Vegas says this is going to have very few points. So I think guys like Samaj P. Ryan, where you know volume's coming, sure, I'm fine with them. I would play Samaj over Dare. Um, they're both just the volume guys. But outside of him and Nick Chubb. So on the Cleveland side of it, uh, we saw Case Keenum once this year. It was against the Denver Broncos. It was a win. And the Denver Broncos, a very solid defense. In that game, he put up 200 passing yards, a touchdown, an interception. And this is a winnable matchup here. How are you feeling about Jarvis or Donovan Peoples-Jones? Not great. Not great, Bob. Um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, Jarvis oh. in a – I mean, you, you used to say, well, Jarvis in a PPR. But, like, Jarvis the last – here's his receptions. Four, four – five six four four three like he's not he's not a PPR machine anymore this offense isn't one of those that is great for the passing him so I'm I'm not starting Jarvis or Donovan Peoples Jones or Austin Hooper may, maybe Austin Hooper because he's a tight end uh all but, right unfortunately I have maybe a wet blanket here for Keyshawn Vaughn Jason Giovanni oh. Bernard could return oh you got to pick him up he could return and and we're getting reports that the mustache is back. <gasps> For real? The the devastatingly handsome Giovanni Bernard mustache could be back. You're talking about the Wild West yes. mustache. That yes. thing was this straight is, up Wyatt Earps. This is a championship level stash. <laughs> Thank you. Um, <laughs> truly, truly, all, no jokes, Giovanni Bernard has to be picked up. Pick him up right now in your league. J-I-C. We don't, we, don't, we don't know that he will be back. But. Right. But if he is back, he will run ahead of Keyshawn Vaughn. He will catch so many dump-offs from Tom Brady. They want the veteran over the – you know, like we were frustrated earlier in the season with Ty – why isn't Tyson getting the ball for the for the Ravens? They're giving it to these old uh, men. No, it's that, the, my Tyson Williams wounds it hasn't are still not healed. No way, man. Wow. You've had some time. 
But my point is, winning coaches, a lot of times, they would much rather have the less athletic, less explosive, but veteran guy who knows where to be and is going to get the job done and isn't going to fumble or make the mistake or miss the pass protection. And so Gio, if he is active and the other guys aren't, I think he's going to catch at least five passes, at least. All right, and Austin Hooper is in a very good situation here. Uh, Bengals dead last against tight ends, so desperation stream perhaps. Yeah, he's okay the, because he's a tight end. The Green Bay Packers, 13-3. and three. The number one seed is locked up. They cannot do anything uh, to improve or move down. They will be taking on the Detroit Lions, who are 2-13-1, which sounds like a combination to someone's luggage. The DraftKings Sportsbook line is – what? No. are The the Packers are still favored? Well, the, yeah, because right now what they've said is right. that they're just going to play it like a normal game. Okay, that's that's fair. But So the Packers are favored by 3.5, over-under sitting at 45 points, according to the, the DK Sportsbook. Rodgers oh, – Rodgers is the, the – he's one of the more difficult questions because, because of the toe. Like, if anyone could use multiple weeks off and does not need to prove anything, he doesn't need to take any reps to uh, to make sure that he's good to go. He's got a toe problem. You give him two weeks off, and he is then, then he's healed. He is absolutely playing for something. The, he, uh, he could be playing for the MVP. He is I, 100% playing for the MVP. That matters a ton to Aaron Rodgers. He wants it. Um, that being said, once they've got the, the lead established and hopefully it comes with Aaron Rodgers throwing a couple touchdowns to Devontae Adams, they will pull their starters. There is a reason that the Green Bay Packers are only favored by three and a half points. If this was a normal week, they'd be favored Touché. by 13 and a half <laughs> points. So when they've got the lead, they will pull their guys. Meaning what you're not going to get from Aaron Rodgers is the t a top three quarterback finish because he's not going to stay in the game to play four quarters of dominance. If he dominates, he'll get pulled, and you'll have a fine game of 25 points. Um, if he – you know, 25 is is the cap. So, that, I mean, that's fine. Um, but I do think they're playing for him to get the MVP. Aaron Jones, A.J. Dillon, the matchup is unbelievably great. I, I Basically, I think you could start your Packers, but you have to remove the expectations of big, giant – you know, the number one running back, the number one quarterback – the number one wide receiver on the week, I don't think that's likely because if they're up by a lot because one of these guys is dominating, then I think they bench him. Devontae Adams did say on Wednesday he doesn't envision playing the entire game. There you go. So even Adams is willing to say it out loud. On the other side of the ball, Jared Goff, questionable. He's dealing with the uh, the bone bruise. What do we do here now that Guns Mahoney has exposed himself to be a – Big fat liar pants uh, <laughs> with DeAndre Swift. The showcase game of last week turned into an absolute fantasy dud. Jay Willie got the touchdown. Amon Ross St. Brown continues to shine. Uh, what are we doing on this side of the ball? Well, you're certainly playing Amon Ross St. Brown. Uh, you'd have to have really good options to bench him. The matchup. What is about Devontae Adams? Oh, you jerk. Yeah, you, that's what you get. You jerk. Would I play Devontae Adams or Amon Ross St. Brown? Oh, my word. Gross. Devontae Adams, clearly the better option, clearly the better player, clearly the better fantasy performer, and I would play Amon Ross St. Brown. Because, oh, yeah. Because I know I'm getting four quarters out of Amon Ross, and I, I know I'm getting one quarter out of Devontae Adams. And so, that's not to say, obviously, I mean, I, it's 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 clear and obvious what our intentions here are. Devontae is the better player, but I'm going to take the more assured uh, volume. The matchup is fine, too, for yeah. St. Brown. Wide receiver, uh, Packers against wide receivers, 22nd over the past six weeks. DeAndre Swift, Jay Willie. What are you doing with the running backs? Um, I, I I'm I'm still going to play DeAndre Swift. I know he lied last week, said he was going to use him a ton. And Seven then, opportunities. Yeah, it was it was awful. Um, but that was his first game back, and they obviously brought him back while they have nothing to play for. So they're wanting to get 
him in the game, and I think he'll get more work, not less. If you look at what he was playing prior to the injuries, 93% of snaps, 73, 71, 75, 78, 74, 72. Yeah, but the upper snap, Jason, the well, upper snap. Yes, but my very point is low. prior to the injury, his upper snap was not super low, and he was on the field a ton. This first week back, he was only on the field 57%. So I think he touches the ball 15 times, and if I get DeAndre Swift uh, uh, touching the ball 15 times, I'm going to play him. Chicago Bears are 6-10, and 10, taking on the Minnesota Vikings, who are 7-9. and nine. DraftKings Sportsbook has this line. Vikings favor by four points with an over-under of 44 and a half. Uh, I feel like this is a pretty easy game as well. Justin Fields, to me, is in play as a streaming option, as a like a lower-end quarterback one, with some upside because Fields runs and the Minnesota Vikings secondary likes to give free points to fantasy wide receivers. David Montgomery, the volume is... He's locked in. He's is guaranteed. locked. Yes, exactly. Uh, Darnell Mooney, because of Fields, because of the matchup, I'm, I have him in as a... As a uh, Top 24 option yeah, I, this I, week. I think he is a wide receiver, too, this week. Uh, should start. Would you start Darnell Mooney or Devontae Adams? Or Devontae Adams. Adams. Um, I think I'd go with Mooney. Yeah. That was that was Mike's answer? Yeah. Um, my question. <laughs> yeah, you're right, though. This game is pretty straightforward, right? You have, Are we just trying to sabotage each other's careers yes, right now? that's all we're doing. Uh, this game is pretty straightforward. David Montgomery, Dalvin Cook are locked in. There's not any reason to talk about them. Um, same with Justin Jefferson. He's locked in. He's got Kirk Cousins back. Uh, the real questions are Darnell Mooney, who we just discussed, and K.J. Osborne, who is not as good as Darnell Mooney, who's the one for the Bears, but I think K.J. Osborne is a decent flex play this week with no Adam Thielen, and when Kirk Cousins has been there, K.J. Osborne's been in that flex category. Alexander Madison, despite the... Very disappointing output from Dalvin Cook last week. He was only on the field for 35% of the snaps, and it was five opportunities. They gave him the passing work, five targets, four for 13 yards. Granted, that was Sean Mannion's Vikings, so it could be a different outcome this week, but I would prefer like Tony Pollard over Alexander Madison at this point. I think that's it for that matchup, right? Yeah, I mean, okay, good. Washington football team six and ten. New York Giants four and twelve. Oh, barn burner. <laughs> DraftKings. The sports book line is Washington's favored by a touchdown, and that over under a oh. juicy, meaty, delightful thirty seven and a half. Boo this game. But there's interesting fantasy implications here. Joe Judge, uh, we kind of we touched on it a little bit yesterday of him saying some things. We did not touch on that. He had some interesting words to say about the Washington football team uh, and then followed up those comments by not joining the coach's call. For the opposing media. Mm, yeah. Huh. Let's talk. Mm. Here's the thing. Mm, the – <laughs> I like that a lot. Um, both of these teams are playing for slightly more than we saw in like the, the Bengals-Browns games, right? Like when these teams, the Bengals and Browns were on the way, they're hopeful, and now they're out of it and they're done, they kind of washed their hands of football. These two teams are playing for like – Oh, they're playing with hate in their heart this week. <laughs> right. I mean, it's divisional. The, the Giants haven't been playing for anything forever. Uh, Joe Judge is playing for his job. Um, and the Washington football team needs to continually get better. They've been kind of out of the running for a while. So at least I know these guys are playing four quarters and they're going to go at it. So I take this game seriously. The problem is there's just not a lot of good options. With Jake Fromm at quarterback, he will be the guy. Um, cool. That that makes the – That makes even Saquon Barkley a very difficult start. That makes the entirety of the Giants almost – untouchable Saquon Barkley over the last three weeks I don't when did Daniel Jones go down it was longer than that I believe but over the last three weeks he has not been even a running back two he he has been the running back 33 53 and 28 he is not a must start player Saquon Barkley or Daria Gumbawale against the Colts Saquon 
Saquon Barkley or sexy Rexy Burkhead against the Tennessee Titans? With David Johnson being back, I'll I'll stick with Saquon. Saquon Barkley or opera snap king Ramondre Stevenson against the Miami Dolphins? Oh, man. I think Ramondre has far higher touchdown potential. I think I go Ramondre there. Yeah, or Saquon Barkley or championship winning Jarrett Patterson should Antonio Gibson miss the game again. If Antonio Gibson is gone, Jarrett Patterson is absolutely in ahead what of Saquon Barkley. What world we live in. Jarrett Patterson has looked really good. Now, I think Antonio Gibson is going to play the more, you know, the closer they get to I don't know why he would. I would not play him if I was the Washington football team. He's been banged up all year, um, but he's played through all the injuries. The only game he missed was the COVID list, and so I expect him to play. If he does, Jarrett Patterson is out. Uh, the question then becomes, how confident are you in Antonio Gibson? Are you willing to start him? Yeah, if he plays, I will play him. Um, ahead of Saquon as well? Yes. Uh, Terry McLaurin, the giant slayer, we talked about him in the buy or sell of how he is just this particular matchup he has excelled in, so I'm willing to play him as a wide receiver three. Well, I will go back to that well. Other than that, nope. Nobody yeah, else. It's 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 easy when the teams suck. The Indianapolis Colts nine and seven taking on the Jacksonville Jaguars, who are two and fourteen. The DraftKings Sportsbook line is the Colts favored by fifteen points. The over under is forty four. And for those doing the math rapidly in their head, that line with the over under puts the Jacksonville Jaguars implied team total at fourteen points. That's not good. No, that's that's not great. But do they get to that number, Mike. I don't know if they do. The Indianapolis Colts, they're playing for their playoffs. Sure. They win and they are in. So this is a playoff game for them against the lowly Jacksonville Jaguars. The Jacksonville Jaguars are playing spoiler for their division rival. That's what's going on in this game as far as motivation is concerned. Yeah, they're, they're, <laughs> they aren't going to spoil anything. So on the Colts side, Jonathan Taylor is in. Michael Pittman is absolutely in in this particular matchup. And, like, I would call Carson Wentz a streamer, but with with Taysom, Trey Lance, and Justin Fields probably available, I would play all of those guys over Carson Wentz. I agree, but in a two-quarterback league, Carson has a place. And this, yeah, yeah. this week, yeah. he should be fine. Trevor Lawrence, week one, three passing touchdowns. Week two through 17, seven total passing touchdowns for the number one rookie, the next Andrew Luck. You know, if you add those together... Wolf. He hit double digit touchdowns. He I, threw ten he's thrown on, ten touchdowns. On. He has ten passing touchdowns. Yeah. I, mean, I guess like pretty good, right? I wasn't doing that simple math in my head. He has ten touchdowns. Oh, baby. What a superstar. And he has played every single game. Yeah. Yeah. He has played every oh, single game. My now technically in goodness. week thirteen he only played ninety eight percent of the snaps. Um, but other than and that, 90% against Buffalo. Yeah. But I'm saying he started a play. whole season. Holy crap, man. Yeah. And this is why I said, Holy like, I, I am, gosh. I am holding this season against him. He has shown no flashes outside of week one. Um, who would you rather be your franchise quarterback right now? Baker Mayfield or Trevor Lawrence? I could Trevor. hear I could hear that face you just made. You could hear my heart break. It, it would be Trevor Lawrence. There's still There's hope still, in the unknown. Yeah, okay, that's fair. But is there hope for Marvin Jones, Laquan Treadwell, four for fifty? No, you no taking way. that four for fifty. No, the uh, the I mean in a, in a DFS lineup where you're in a cash game and he costs nothing and will give you ten PPR points. Sure. Outside of that, I'm not playing with the Colts. Have to win. They are going to shut down the Jacksonville Jaguars and the passing game that hasn't been going for the Jaguars. I'm not touching it. No Treadwell, no Marvin Jones, no thank you. Now, uh, Dari Gumbawale, we, we've brought his name up a couple times. The matchup is okay. The matchup is okay here against the Colts. 23rd against fantasy running backs over the past six weeks. Should see enough volume that maybe he's a, a desperation off of the waiver wire, and a name to just just watch out for him, Dan Arnold, the postman. Oh, really? He was designated to return two weeks ago from the IR. He is back from the COVID list. We don't know for sure if he's going to play, but if he is out there and you have no streaming options, 
Or maybe maybe this is just a DFS call. Yeah, I think it's more DFS because I, I can't imagine, you know, the, those other names we brought up earlier with, with Tyler Higby that I would throw Dan Arnold in right off the bat. But it is a good matchup. He was getting the targets. So if you're setting a lineup and, you know, I, I don't hear he will play. Just, yeah, keep an eye on him. Pittsburgh, 8-7-1. Taking on the Baltimore Ravens at 8 and 8. DraftKings has this line at the Ravens favored by 5 points. The over under is 42. Both teams have slim chances to get into the playoffs. Pittsburgh, if they win and the Colts lose, they will get in. AKA, I'm sorry, Pittsburgh, maybe next year. But it is, it's not a losing season. So now the stat of Mike Tomlin has never had a losing season. Yeah, I'm, I'm happy that it, that it has. Stuck around. That's it's crazy. Really, really, really crazy. And uh, I believe they are two more winning seasons away from the all-time record. So I, I hope they get it. Uh, it's yep. good to be a Steelers fan. Not so much this year. Baltimore, uh, low chances. They need to win plus. They need losses by four specific teams. Also known as, sorry, Baltimore. Uh, maybe next year. What are we doing here? Ben Roethlisberger. The Ravens matchup is juicy. No, 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 no. I mean, Ben Roethlisberger is a shell of a of a quarterback. I mean, he can't do probably any. without Deontay Johnson. Yeah, and he's without his top option. That's a, that's a no from me, dog. Now, without <laughs> Deontay Johnson, this, this what about narrative, man? This could be Big Ben's final game. This is Big Ben's final game. Well, I'm saying could be because the Colts could the lose Colts to could, the Jags. The Colts could technically lose. Okay, fine. It could be, but he will be playing as if this is his last game, um, and it will be. So, you no, know, no narrative is going to get me to start Ben Roethlisberger. If I'm in a two quarterback league, no, I will not start. Ben okay, so then are you are you getting Luth? Yes, I am getting Luth. I All mean, right. the the Muth is Luth. Pat Fryermuth, without Deontay Johnson, will be a massive benefit. That's a good year. point. Um, without you know, he's going to have those. Sh short, intermediate, cross-the-middle routes, and, you know, maybe he ends up with only 58 yards, but I could see him with, you know, 8, 9, 10 receptions, and at tight end, that's great. He's also one of the go-tos around the goal line, so I think I think the, the Muth will be Luth in the championship week here. On the other side of the ball, or I, I, we'll talk about it real quick, Chase Claypool, are you going to, is he an option if Deontay Johnson's out, go yeah. with that volume? Yeah, he's an option. On the other side of the ball, Lamar Jackson did not practice on Wednesday. I don't think he plays. So, yeah, he'll probably be shut down. Tyler Huntley becomes a streaming option yet again. Devonta Freeman had been trending down over the, the last couple weeks where Latavius Murray was starting to eat more into those snaps and the opportunities. He did, however, see 68% of the snaps. That's the highest since week 13, which was coincidentally against Pittsburgh. 15 opportunities. 14 for 76 on the ground against the Rams. Looking okay. And the matchup is solid. The, the Steelers' defense has completely collapsed against the run. 31st against fantasy running backs over the past six weeks, allowing over 27 points a game mm -hmm. to the position. Yep. Is Freeman back in for, running back two category? Yeah. He is He is a running back two, a low-end running back two, but he's ahead of those volume-awful plays. He's ahead of the Dare Agumba Wales. And P. The, Ryan. And, and you play Freeman over P. Ryan? I think P Ryan will catch passes, so I I I might go P Ryan over over Freeman, but uh, Dare uh, Rex Burkhead, those guys, I would I would rather have Freeman because I think Freeman gets a touchdown in this game. Okay, uh, Hollywood Brown if he plays, one uh, top twenty four performance I don't think so. since week nine. I mean the the reality is he was great, he was consistent, he was awesome with Lamar Jackson. Lamar Jackson hasn't played in a while. Marquise Brown hasn't been good in a while. Yeah. I'm going to say that the passing work all goes to Mark Andrews because that's what's happened. Mark Andrews has been incredible. I'm willing to play him this week. And we will finish. Oh, Mark Andrews? Yeah. I'm going to go <laughs> out hot. on a limb. That's hot, brother. Mm -hmm. All right. We will hit the rest of the matchups tomorrow with Andy. But now it's time for the starts. Starts of the week. Who's your quarterback, Jake? My quarterback is Russell. Wilson, Wilson. Wilson. Um, I limited. <laughs> I have said it for the last two months. I'm going to wait until I see something from Russ where I feel like he's back, and then I will start him. 
I think he's back. He looked good last week with four touchdowns. He had his chef hat on. He was cooking. Over the last month, Arizona has allowed the third most quarterback fantasy points, the most for wide receivers. He lit up the Cardinals last year and forever, uh, 388 and three, uh, along with 84 yards on the ground. Uh, Russ is playing for his own pride, his trade value, the uh you know a divisional matchup i think he he's a, a great start this week my quarterback start is Taysom hill against the atlanta falcons i probably could just stop right there after saying the atlanta falcons but the saints they still have a chance to get into the playoffs Taysom was the quarterback 13 last week despite just coming off the covid list despite having a meh day through the air because he runs last year he started against atlanta twice quarterback four quarterback eight and the Falcons allowing the seventh most rushing yards in the NFL. He is in play as a streaming option. At running back, I'm going with an opera snap king. Oh, Deonta Foreman at Houston. Deonta Foreman has scored a touchdown or gone over 100 yards in five straight games. The Titans are set on running the ball. At 47% of the time, they have the highest rate in the NFL. The Texans have allowed the most rushing yards in the NFL and the most 10-plus yards, which is kind of like Deonta Foreman. He's that little ch- he's that chunk king where yeah. he just loves ripping off the 10 15 yards uh at ease. I think he's a smash play. It's a must win situation for the Titans. Devin Singletary takes on oh, the New yeah. York Jets, ladies and gentlemen. He's scored in 3 straight weeks. The opportunities are going up. He's averaging 19 carries over the past 3 weeks. And I'll say it again, he's playing the Jets. The Bills are 17 point home favorites. Yeah, I would love to have him in my lineup um i'm going with pity city city. we're back baby michael pittman we've been on vacation (laughs) at jacksonville it is time to establish residence in pity city Uh, he is too important to this offense in an absolute must win game he hasn't scored since week nine but the targets have really really been there Uh, And against the Jaguars, Jacksonville's allowing the seventh most wide receiver fantasy points, the highest expected points added per pass attempt in the NFL. Get those bags packed, go on vacation to Pity City with Michael Pittman. I'm going with Darnell Mooney. Cardboard Bear extraordinaire Jay Grizz loves it. He's 71 yards away from a 1,000-yard season. The Minnesota secondary stinks. Uh, It's that easy. (laughs) This This one, don't overthink it. Darnell Mooney is in play as a high-end starter. And at tight end, I'm going Zach Ertz. Zach Ertz has been dominating the targets. I know he hasn't done a ton with them, but for fantasy, in any kind of PPR, half PPR, um, I am certainly in on Zach Ertz this week. He's been so necessary with DeAndre Hopkins out. In the last three weeks, he's leading the team in target shares of 22.9, 33.3, and 24.3, and Seattle's allowed the seventh most tight end fantasy points, the highest target success rate, to the position in the NFL, um, Zach Ertz is, you know, he, he's just, to me, if you don't have one of the top guys, he's like my favorite next tier up guy. And I'm booking an appointment with the doctor, Dr. Schultz, a.k.a. Dalton Schultz, taking on the Philadelphia Eagles. He's back. He is on fire, tight end 5, 2, and 10 over the past three weeks, seeing a huge target share, 8, 9, and 10. The matchup is there against the Philadelphia Eagles who have allowed the most fantasy points to opposing tight ends. And the issue with with, uh, with Schultz was the concern when Michael Gallup came back would the targets start to siphon away from him. Unfortunately for Michael Gallup, he tore his ACL last week. So the doctor is back in full play for me. I mean, when you tear at ACL, what do you need? You need a doctor. You need a doctor. Yeah, it's you just, do. It just makes sense. <laughs> All right, here it is. Oh, man. Make sure you are in a uh, comfortable position, somewhere where you can really focus, really concentrate. Somewhere where you can leap. I think you're going to probably jump. Really? I think you're going to get excited. I think, you know, you just got to have ceiling room here because you're probably going to get up out that chair right now. Last week on Boom Boom, I Hadouk and Jake Elliott and Robbie Gould. Let's go. Jason Moore's Ironclad, Locked and Loaded, 100% guaranteed Boom Boom Kicker of the Week. Victorious. The crowds were sanctimonious as I was carried through all of the mass. I came to a throne 
it was my own, knighted by the Bills' Tyler Bass. Raised on a chair, there was joy in the air, for a champion was given much thicker. I was rightfully crowned, fully endowed as the one true boom boom kicker. I'm the boom boom. <laughs> That's right, we did it. You were the boom boom all along. Mm-hmm. The one true. Huh? Really? Uh, really towing the line on that one. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's week eighteen. <laughs> So we get a little, <laughs> we get a little uh, oh, risky between this and yesterday's green room faux pas. Oh yeah, which will <laughs> I mean that's the party room. You yeah, got, that is it's the party room. If you weren't there, you don't get to know what happened. You get one more chance. We're on green room next Wednesday. Oh man, what a incredible, incredible conclusion for the best segment this show has ever seen. Thank you. Oh, that's gonna do it. We want to thank today's sponsor, the PristineAuction.com, the best sports memorabilia site of all time. Currently available on Pristine Auction, a signed Austin Eckler jersey. That price is sitting at just $50. A signed Amari Cooper jersey sitting at just $31. Those, those auctions will end tonight. Hundreds of new things every single day. PristineAuction.com. Use our registration code BALLERS. You will get a $10 credit. Go we get did your it. championships, guys. Guys and gals out there, make sure you get your Saturday players out of your flex. Mm -hmm. Be prepared for COVID with some backups. Let's get that. Uh, let's get that hardware, get that trophy. We will cover the rest of the matchups tomorrow. Jason will see some type of shame. Andy will be back. Stay safe. We will see you tomorrow. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.